Hey, um, we're going to take some more notes today. Obviously, as always, uh, you know, pause the video. You need to copy things down. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you actually came and got the literary terms packet, but I imagine, or at least I hope, you are copying all of these notes down. Um, if not in the packet, then you know, in the same notebook and the same sheets of paper that maybe they're stapled together, so you can have access to them um, when you need them. Uh, I'm not going to have an assignment that goes along with this. Per se, um, but you know we're going to be covering conflict, which which uh, you have a slide about conflict on your um, AR presentation, uh, and you know upcoming assignments will have to be we'll, we'll be talking about conflict and imagery, and uh, you know also as for all the notes, there will be notes uh, or I should say quizzes and things related to these assignments. So that's how it will grade whether or not you. Um, Got these notes, all right? Um, so we're moving on from all summer today to movies and metaphors, and we're going to be reading. Um, actually, not going to be reading. We're going to be watching um, Edgar Allan Poe's *The Telltale Heart*. Um, and I guess we'll, we'll we'll get right into it. Um, imagery. Okay. Pause the video. Copy the definition of imagery, as it says here. Imagery uh, is the author's use of language that appeals to the five senses. In case you don't remember the five senses, hearing, seeing, tasting, touching, and smelling. Uh, the author appeals to these five senses in order to help the reader imagine exactly uh, what is being described. In a nutshell, as it says there at the bottom, it's something written with a really great detailed description. Detailed description so great that you can imagine it, right? Imagine, the imagery has the word image in it. Image means picture. You know, we're creating pictures in our head based on the descriptions, okay? Um, you know, what, what sense do authors focus on most when writing? Um, I think it's pretty clear that most of the time they're focusing on, you know, visual imagery. You know, they're painting the visual images in your head so you can know what the characters look like, what the setting looks like, um, you know, what the actions that are happening in the story, you know, they're describing all these things to you so you can imagine the picture in your head as to what's happening, okay? But there are, you know, other uh, modes of, you know, I guess there are the other senses that authors can appeal to. Um, I keep saying that, you know, if the fantastic film Ratatouille um, was a novel, that, um, you know, the author would probably focus most on taste. You know, it's a story about a chef and food. Um, so obviously they're probably talking about taste the most. You will be will be watching. Uh, for the sake of time, we're not going to read um, the text, although I can send it out to you for those interested. Um, but we will you'll be watching a, a short film depiction of Edgar Allan Poe's *The Telltale Heart*. And obviously, uh, this is a master storyteller, and he you know very much describes the way things look, and there's moments that are very clear. Um, that you can visualize, that I can visualize very clearly. But he also focuses on hearing in this short story. Um, and he, in fact, the, uh, the, the narrator of the story, he describes in the very beginning that, you know, he has such acute hearing, such very strong hearing, hearing so great that he can hear things in heaven, he can hear things on earth, and he can even hear things in hell. And I imagine if you're, you know, watching this, and you might be thinking to yourself, "Well, that narrator does not sound sane." Uh, and you'd be absolutely correct, um, because it's impossible to hear things in heaven and hell. Um, so he is not mentally uh, stable, and uh, that's what the story is about. Um, so imagery, just to come back to the notes is focusing, uh, really strong description that focuses on the five senses, okay? Uh, I lay in my bed and took another minute to enjoy the moment. I breathed in the warm, sweet aroma of the freshly cut grass, as well as the slight hint of skunk spray from deep within the woods. I could pick out the scent of Emery's dirty diaper, his sweaty little head, and the baby powder on his changing table. The heat compounded these smells and doubled the fragrance. So ask yourself, you know, what, what sense is the author focusing on in this Scene, right? Smell. So all this talk about how things smell. So that's the imagery um, that the author is focusing on. The sense of smell. 
The tree along the paths were set ablaze with the bright oranges, reds, greens, and yellows, and leaves that were about to begin their descent to the ground. They quivered and danced in the warm breeze of the early morning sunlight. What, what, what sense is the author focusing on here? Sight, right? The colors and the, the way the things are moving. Uh, so it's sight. All right. Next, we're going to talk about confidence. As I said, this one's pretty big. This one's pretty important going forward. This is sort of the backbone of storytelling to a degree. Uh, conflict. You know conflict as sort of, uh, you know, a fight, an argument. And, you know, you're not wrong. In literature, conflict, there's a struggle or a problem that arises in the story. You can pause it uh, to copy this down. The struggle or problem that arises in the story. Without a conflict, there is no plot. You have to have a conflict. Um, you can have a minor conflict. That conflict can be like, I lost my pencil. I need to find a new one before next period. Okay, that's a conflict. It's minor, doesn't really matter to in the grand scheme of things, but you, know, you can write a story about that. Um, it can be major. You know, we have to stop, you know, the evil wizard from destroying New York City with his magic spells. To learn an example. But it's still that's a major problem. It's to save humanity, or at least the population of New York City. So that's major. Okay. Uh, major minor, you have to have a conflict in the story. And it's different types of conflict, okay? There's two categories, there's internal and external. Uh, external, I, I hope, I imagine you understand and you know, external means outside, right? This is the external view of a dog. Internal means inside. This is the internal view of a dog, right? We have internal organs, as is this dog. Uh, internal means inside, external, outside. So there's external conflict. Copy this down, pause, welcome back. Um, external conflict is when another character or outside force causes problems for the main character, okay? Obviously, protagonist versus antagonist, I guess I'll get right into it, right? This is called character versus character. So you have a little space on your literary terms packet if that's what you're using. If not, just jot, jot down character versus character. You don't have to get the definition, it's just the protagonist has a conflict with another group or another character. And as I said, character or, or antagonist versus protagonist. For example, you know, all summer and day, Margot versus William. Margot versus the other school children. It's characters versus character. Okay. Bart versus Homer. Kylo Ren versus Ray. Darth Vader versus Luke Skywalker. Think about any of your favorite movies, any of your favorite books, uh, and you know, is, is there a character versus character um, conflict in there? The other, the other external conflict, as it said in the de definition, is an outside force. Well, what's an outside force? Well, nature is an outside force. Character versus nature is another type of external conflict when uh, the protagonist is struggling against the forces of nature. Okay? That could be a storm. Right? It could be a tornado, an avalanche, a hurricane, um, anything, right? Anything that is, you know, a, a volcano, um, a typhoon, a monsoon, a tidal wave. Um, all of these things are force of nature that would cause a problem for a character, right? It could also be just like survival in general. There's a, you know, the book Hatchet, Brian's plane crashes and he has to survive in the woods by himself. He's fighting against the force of nature to stay alive. Um, there's a newer book called Raft, where Robbie uh, is a young girl who uh, her plane crashes in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and she's stuck in a raft, and she has to survive. Um, so that's character versus nature. And of course, any story, excuse me, any story where the characters are fighting against, you know, a specific animal, um, whether it's a bear or a dog. Oh, one of my students brought up... Um, the Sandlot, right? The kids are fighting against that big giant, the beast, that big dog. Um, so that's character versus nature. And of course, Jaws is another great example, if you've ever seen that. Uh, the final type of external conflict, for our sakes anyway, is character versus society. This is the protagonist is a strong belief against the government, against the laws, or the beliefs of the majority of the community. Um, and I don't, I will have some literary examples, but I think the strongest example um, 
of this was a real person, somebody we all have learned about in elementary school, Dr. Martin Luther King, right? Perfect example of character, although obviously a real person, but character versus society, okay? Um, we learn now about how wonderful Dr. King's message was uh, and is, um, and we learn about what a great man he was, um, and all this is true, but we don't often learn about you know, how at the time he was you know, not well loved. He was not well liked by the majority of people, certainly in the South, okay? Uh, he was battling against society. He was battling, and of course, he is sort of the figurehead of this movement, of the civil rights movement, but there was um, you know, several people um, that were marching right alongside him um, for civil rights. Uh, but he is a perfect example of fighting against the norms of society. Not only did he fight against the local governments, with the cities and, and villages and, and uh, counties, but also the state governments, and even to agree to a degree, you know, the federal government, uh, but also, you know, just the groups of people and the norms of society. He was saying, uh, you know, black people need to have the right, the, the same equal rights to um, to vote, to marry who they want to marry, to own property, to walk in whatever establishments they want to walk in. Um, and, you know, the majority of society, again, particularly in the South, said, no, that is not true. That should not happen. So he is battling against the norms of society. Okay? Character versus society. In literature, we have Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games. You know, she uh, is would be considered sort of a peasant, you know, of the lower class. And the government and the upper class, you know, rule everything. And, you know, she is saying, well, this isn't right. The way we live is, is not the right way to live. We will start a revolution and we'll make sure that, you know, all the people have power and not just this very um, small group. Um, let's, we'll, we'll skip that and we'll go to internal conflict. So internal means inside, so I'll pause, you'll pause this video, copy this down, and we're back. Uh, internal conflict is when a character struggles are coming from within them, okay? And that can mean a variety of things. These struggles can be with identity. And that's sort of a loaded uh, idea nowadays. Um, and that, so that could mean sexual identity. That could be gender identity. That could just be sort of personal identity of like, who am I? What am I all about? What do I stand for? You know, where do I fit in? Um, you know, what type of person am I? And to put it in sort of junior high, you know, terms, you know, do I, am I a person who cares about my grades? Am I a person who wants to be sort of like a jock and sporty? Uh, am I an artist? You know, um, am I you know, into music? Am I, you know, a, 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 fa you know, a fan of different scenes? Am I a skateboarder? Things like that. So that could be identity issues. It could be moral issues, you know, similar to identity. You know, what do I believe in? What do I stand for? What am I willing to fight for? Um, what's the difference between wrong and right? Um, and then, of course, just having tough decisions. You know, should I do this? Should I do that? I should do this, but I don't want to. It's too difficult. Um, and then, and then, you know, very literally, uh, sickness as well. If you're fighting an illness, um, that's sort of an internal struggle. Your body is fighting itself. Um, which brings us to our first example uh, from *The Fault in Our Stars*. Great book. Hazel Grace uh, is our and our protagonist, and she has a very serious form of cancer. So her body is literally fighting itself. You know, internally, she's at, you know at war within her. But not only is it that literal sense, but she's also you know, struggling with her with herself um, and her relationships. You know, she is very ill, so she's wondering, you know, is it worth starting relationships with people? You know, is it worth having friends? Is it worth sort of being, you know, warm and friendly with my parents? Uh, and, and even, you know, uh, romantically with this boy named Gus? Uh, because if I'm very sick and I'm going to die, eventually I'm just going to, you know, hurt these people. So, you know, maybe, I sh maybe it's not worth it which is, uh, you know, something she's struggling with internally, uh, which is pretty heavy. And it is a heavy topic, um, but just to be clear, it's a very funny book, believe it or not. It is sad, uh, but also moments of, like, laugh out loud uh, stuff, so it's good. Uh, Hunger Games, again, internal conflict. You can see from the picture, it's sort of a, a love triangle. You know, I love them both, but for different reasons, and who should I choose? But it's also, you know, just your typical, you know, Believing in yourself, you know, which is something obviously a lot of teenagers struggle with. 
Um, but in her case, it's you know extreme. You know, people are saying you're our leader. You're going to you know help us you know to a revolution. And she's saying that's I'm not that person. Am I that person? Am I capable of doing this? So she is struggling internally. And that brings us to um, the narrator of the short story, The Telltale Heart. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know he is mentally ill, um, and he is struggling with you know um, with this you know, internally. So, perfect example. Um, I will post an Ed puzzle about this. Uh, it'll be the short, you know, a short film about this story. I guess along with it, I'll post a text for anybody who's interested. Um, just a little bit of a warning um, that it, you know, it's very silly and it's very bad special effects. It is very clearly like computer generated, um, but there was a moment of slight gore, and if that is something you're uh, you know, don't want to look at, then just email me and let me know. Okay. Uh, but one more, one more question, right? We can talk about conflict in uh, along water to water, something we've all read. Um, internal conflict, external conflict. Uh, my point is that it's both. Okay. A story can have multiple conflicts. The external conflict in a long walk to water. Is it character versus character? The two characters fighting against each other? Not really. Is it character versus society? Um, yeah, right. It's, you know, the war going on is, you know, from the government, you know, trying to enforce, uh, or impose a religion on the people. Somebody in my class brought up, well, it's also like two societies, the Dinka versus the newer, which I thought was a great idea. Um, is it character versus nature? Yeah. Right. It's just for the fight, fighting for survival as Salva, you know, crosses an African, uh, wilderness. And then, of course, is there, in, there, there is an internal struggle as well, internal conflict, Salva, um, fighting, you know, to stay alive, you know, and not give up. You know, oftentimes he says, you know, I want to give up, but I can't. You know, when will I see my family again? I'm going to keep walking. His uncle keeps saying, you know, one foot in front of the other, don't give up. you got to persevere. Um, you know, hope, I, you know, hope is a powerful thing. So this is sort of internal struggle he's dealing with as well. All right? So that's conflict. That's imagery. Um, these things are going to be important, um, you know, for the rest of this year, but also, you know, for the rest of your uh, high school career. All right, let me know if you have any questions. I'll post the Ed Puzzle soon, and I will see you later. Bye.